Alrighty guys, so the market is looking very green today and in this episode we'll be going over everything you need to know with regards to the crypto market, some of the moves that you should expect to make and before we get started, like the usual, don't forget to hit that like button down below and let's hop right into the computer and see what's going on in the markets today. Alrighty guys, so the global crypto market cap for today is sitting at $1.47 trillion or a 4.29% increase over the last day. Today we're seeing just a little bit more volume sitting at $92 billion in the last 24 hours and Bitcoin has been at $36,000 for a majority of the day or a 5% increase in the last 24 hours with Ethereum breaking almost $2,200 today and sitting at $2,183 or 4.37% increase. Now going down You'll see that within this past week, we're getting anywhere from 20 to even 30% increases in the overall crypto prices. We're seeing ICP finally making a quick bounce off from what we expect, 20 to $30 being the bottom of this last cryptocurrency with other cryptos like Ethereum Classic gaining up to 27% increases just today. So let's go into some of the best performing crypto assets in the top 100. Elrond is also up 21% just today. And we also also have Qtum up 15%, Bitcoin Gold up 14%. Scrolling down, we also have VeChain up 13.67%, Shiba Inu up 13.18%, and majority of other cryptos up on average about 10% in the market today. So I think the timing right now couldn't have been any more perfect. We've been talking about how the approach of July is going to bring forth more bullish activity. And right now, this is really good news, not only because we're starting to see a nice healthy increase in Bitcoin, but we're also seeing other altcoins like Ethereum and other branches, Ethereum Classic, gaining some serious traction as well. As an investor, these are definitely not the days that you want to consider investing only because we still have a lot more opportunity to make some lower lows or even return back to our previous all-time highs. But anytime you want to consider reinvesting into the crypto market, if you're not dollar cost averaging consistently, I recommend that you buy in on those red days where it seems the hardest. I do believe we are going to have many more opportunities to come and that this is not the only moonshot time we have for Bitcoin and the rest of the overall crypto market. So if you guys are experiencing any type of FOMO right now and you feel like you didn't invest enough at all, just wait a little bit because we will experience another pullback where you will have an opportunity to invest again into the market. Towards the end of the video, we will be going over some price targets that we need to see with Bitcoin. But for now, let's cover some crypto news that you guys should be aware of. So Tom Brady has been reported to be heavily involved in the crypto space, but just recently, Recently, he actually came out with an announcement of an equity stake with the crypto exchange FTX. So several months ago, Tom Brady went ahead and launched an NFT platform with Apple, DraftKings, and Spotify executive advisors. The NFT platform is still underway where if you go on the homepage, you're only going to get this one landing page where you can join the early adopters club. I went ahead and put my information in there just to see what may happen in the future because they do have a pretty impressive team of advisors and board. So when this really does begin to pick up. I do want to line myself in a position where maybe I can pick up some NFTs before the market goes into another boom. For the most part, the NFT market has cooled down significantly, but like I've said in plenty of videos, I do believe things are going to start heating back up once we get into the fourth quarter this year. Now, although the NFT market can be pretty intimidating, especially if you don't know where to start, one of the first places that I began was the NBA Top Shot market. Right now, you're going to see a lot of opportunities in here because the market has completely bought bottomed out. And I do believe we're going to have an opportunity to see additional increases in the price. And if you want to have a chance of making additional money, this is just free advice. You can get one of these starter packs or wait for any type of uh, pack drops to come out. And you can either hold on to those or open those and then flip those cards when the price of the entire NFT market starts to pick back up and go to a rise. At the moment, I have held off on most investments, but I have been keeping an eye out on any significant NFTs, and I will be holding those long term just to see if they will go up in value. Another cool thing is you guys may have not noticed this, but I had a little addition to our studio setup. This right here is actually one of the NFTs that I created with my graphic designer, and I was able to put into this 
physical item right here. So it's in the back of my studio. This is an NFT that you guys can pick up as well. We are selling it on Rarible. I do not recommend it because it is pretty expensive and we're not going to be adjusting the price anytime soon. But this is just one of the neat little things that you can get from the market. Uh, is there real value in this? Not really, but is there real value in art? I guess it's what people perceive it to be. So I'm holding on to this. I absolutely love it. And anytime I look at this, it gives me memories of the good old AMD. MC GME short squeeze days. All right, guys, on top of that, just less than an hour ago, Coinbase went ahead and announced that they'll pay users 4% interest on USDC holdings. Coinbase did also note that the loaned USDC is not protected by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, also known as the FDIC, or the SIPC, the Securities Investor Protection Corporation, unlike typical savings account in the US. The exchange originally offered 1.25% yields on USDC from October 2019 to June 2020 when it unexpectedly announced rewards for users holding the stablecoin would drop to a measly 0.15%. So the 4% interest definitely is pretty enticing, but you can actually find yourself yielding much more than that, up to 8 or 9% APY on your cryptocurrency. And if you sign up with BlockFi, you can find yourself doing that as well. So far, just in the past few months, I've been able to accrue just 160 dollars in paid interest as well. But keep in mind, a majority of my BlockFi portfolio is in other altcoins like Chainlink, Ethereum, and then I have $12,000 in Bitcoin. As you can see in the transactions, about every month I've been receiving either a bonus payment or interest payment on my cryptocurrency. When it comes to my holdings with crypto, I do like to keep a balanced portfolio, especially one that is able to earn me free interest without doing anything at all. If you guys want to go ahead and check out BlockFi, use my link down below in the description. It'll also give you a bonus when you sign up completely for free, just as a little gift to you. Now, on top of that, China forcing their crypto miners out of business just a week back. We are now hearing that Chinese hydropower plants are going on sale amidst the Bitcoin mining crackdown. So something I really want to touch upon is other countries countries trying to get rid or trying to suppress the adoption of cryptocurrency and what we've been seeing exactly. So uh, the first time we heard about China in the news, we saw Bitcoin definitely drop in price. It was putting a lot of pressure. People are freaking out even more. But right now we're still seeing lower hash rates and we're still getting more talks about China actually banning Bitcoin mining from their operations. But we're also seeing these mining companies moving out of China and finding alternative ways to continue mining Bitcoin in in the near future. We've also been seeing an increase with the price of Bitcoin, regardless of the hash rates going down. So a lot of this still further supports my theory that the fact that anytime mining does go down and the hash rate goes down, we still don't see any type of real significance with the overall crypto prices. Now, on top of that, we had the Bank of France governor saying that Europe should make crypto regulation a priority or risk digital assets challenging its monetary sovereignty. Villaroy said he believed the European Union only had one or two years left in which to establish establish a regulatory framework for cryptocurrencies. To not act, according to the central bank governor, would risk of an erosion of our monetary sovereignty and potentially weaken the euro. The Bank of France governor has previously warned regulators against the potential risk of cryptocurrency, including stablecoins and central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. Now, although mainstream media would take a quote or headline like this as bad news, you have to realize this is pretty good news for the overall cryptocurrency investor, only because we're now seeing other countries realizing and putting a time frame on how amazing Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are going to change the world. They literally talk about it in this article, how this is a risk of an erosion to their monetary sovereignty, meaning it can potentially weaken the euro. So when other countries come out here with statements saying that cryptocurrency is going to weaken their currency, I think that's just a whole bunch of BS. If anyone in the United States even said that, that would be the most ridiculous thing ever because we have countries sitting here printing money through stimuluses right now with everything going on in the world, seeing the effects of the pandemic and seeing the rises in many different prices across all markets. Cryptocurrency is not weakening any type of monetary value. All right, guys, to wrap this video up, we are looking very good if we're following the current Wyckoff schematics. Right now, if we are still early in the phase D of the graph, we can see that we are going to get a little bit of liftoff and we are exactly where the Wyckoff schematic puts us. 
loss, and we've been going through all different phases in the past few months. Now, I do want to mention that we there is a possibility that we could be in a much earlier phase of the Wyckoff theory. You have to keep in mind that whatever still happens, there may be pullbacks. And if it does go back a little bit more in price and it still resets into phase D, I'm okay with that because as long as phase C and phase D and phase E continue to happen, we will see that rise in price and hopefully near those previous all-time highs where you can decide, hey, I'm going to keep holding or where most people are going to decide to liquidate their current positions. I strongly believe if we do get back to the near $60,000 price range that most people will be selling off their crypto investments and it's going to be much harder for us to get near the $75,000 to $90,000 price target by the end of the year. But we're still only approaching July and there's a lot of time ahead of us in order for us to make a lot of money in this market. Now, on the other side of that, in the short-term volatility, we do have the potential of being in a bull trap, meaning if we're not able to close above a certain threshold and we continue to see the volume diminish, we may be in a situation where the price returns back down to the near $30,000. Now, regardless of whatever happens, if you guys have been following the strategy of going long, holding onto your crypto investment, these type of volatility swings are just gonna be additional opportunities for you to make more money in the market. So if Bitcoin could continuing to increase in prices and Ethereum also continuing to go up. The reason why I'm not investing into any other altcoins at this moment is because of the fact that we're still controlled by Bitcoin's price movement. So whatever happens with Bitcoin, that's what we're going to see with other altcoins fall. And if the market does decide to fall anymore, I just don't see the return of these altcoins of anywhere from 10, 30% being worth the possibility of seeing a 50% plus decrease in the price. Now, there's a strong possibility that that may never happen at all. But if you guys are part of my inner circle, just as an example, you're a Patreon member, you'll know how much money I have allocated in my crypto portfolios. And I do not ever want to be over leveraged in this situation, especially right now when all of the charts are still wonky and we're still trying to find the direction of where crypto is headed towards the end of the year. Now, guys, thank you all so much again for watching. I'll keep you updated if we do see any type of drastic movement in the market. So make sure you guys subscribe and turn that bell notification on so you don't miss out on any upload. Thank you all so much again for watching. Today's code word is going to be banana. Comment down below banana if you made it all the way till the end of this video. On top of that, don't forget to check out Weeble where you can get two free stocks, one valued up to $1,800 where you can trade both crypto and stocks after you deposit $100 into the app. Don't forget to check out BlockFi. Like I mentioned earlier, earn up to 9% APY on your crypto holdings. And one final thing, Surfshark, protect yourself with a VPN at all costs. Check out my link down below in the description if you're looking to get 83% off and three months free. Thank you all so much, Ken, for watching. And until next time, peace out.